Hi, thank you for joining me on my quest to find out more about the churches. Using what's left of the manila folder, I created a tag. I'll be using tags and tippings to create these seven churches. There are tags available for purchase, but where's the fun when I can make one? This is a seven part series that will be displayed monthly. Once again, these videos are a part of my legacy letter and I would love for you to join me. Cool thing about this is the work has already been done for me. Of course, I'll do a little research, but not much. I will summarize each church's history, focusing on the author's main points, and then create. Join me in a history lesson of the churches. The seven churches were real churches in John's day. Today, they represent categories of churches. The church in Pergamum. The compromising church, known today as the Catholic Church. There is so much going on with this church, I don't know where to begin. When it comes to this church, the new age has begun and times have changed. Satan learned that when he persecuted Smyrna, the church grew stronger. So he rose up a standard against the church and when new governmental officials were elected and this church wanted money, the church had to please the government by adopting paganistic practices. This destroyed the church of its fire, which is the burning desire for God. One compromise led to another. Pergamum began to be mysterious and removed the Holy Scriptures from its members and replaced it with a manuscript that's paraphrased with have truths about Jesus, law, and grace. Remember, the false prophets at Smyrna were teaching this doctrine. It is known as the doctrine of Satan. Pergamum changed the Chaldean Ta, which was a capital T, to the sign of the cross. The rosary was introduced. The rosary, which means crown of roses or garland of roses, is a series of prayers and also a string of 55 beads used to count these prayers as they are recited. The cross is attached at the end. This ritual was practiced in Babylonian times. Jesus is against this, and you can read it in Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. Celibacy of priests and nuns began. This has no biblical basis. Over time, these other paganistic rituals were introduced. Prayers for the dead, making the sign of the cross, worship of saints and angels, mass first introduced, priests began dressing differently than members, extreme unction began. Unction is the act of anointing people with oil. Doctrine of purgatory introduced, Worship services conducted in Latin. Prayers directed to Mary. When Christianity became the state religion, the church grew rich and powerful, and the status of Israel was reintroduced, and with it the Holy Scriptures were allowed back in the church. And where this doctrine isn't taught, the church is cold, indifferent and worldly. Revelation chapter 2 verses 12 through 17. To the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne, yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, not even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. There are some of you who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin 
so that they ate food, sacrificed to idols, and committed sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise, otherwise I will soon come against you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will give a sum of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. God commends Pergamum. He says, I know you are established in a satanic city. God is referring to Rome. He says, yet you remain true to my name. He's talking about the Holy Scriptures that the church once taught, but doesn't anymore. He also says, you did not renounce your faith in me. So Pergamum um, still says there are the church where God is the center. Um, they still says Jesus is also the center of that church. And that's what the basis is. But then God condemns them by saying, you teach the doctrine of Balaam. You can read more about Balaam in Numbers chapters 22 through 31. And then God says, you also teach the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And this is a strong ecclesiastical hierarchy ruling over the members. God counsels Pergamum. He says, repent or be judged based on my word. The Holy Scriptures that this church has that they traded for the pagan doctrine will be used to judge them. God's challenge to Pergamum is for overcomers. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. God says that once the individual in this church overcomes, he will give them hidden manna. Hidden manna is the spiritual food provided by the word of God and for only the individual people to eat. White stone. White in the Bible means the righteousness of God. In ancient times, when a person was accused of a crime, the jury acquitted them by laying down a white stone. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, and the white stone stands for a symbol of our eternal acquittal. If you or someone you know is a part of this church, there is still hope. God wants you to repent and come back to him. Let me encourage you. Only the word of God can fix it. Only the word of God can heal it. Only the word of God can deliver, set free, and make whole. No other doctrine can free us. Just get yourself alone and say, God, I've sinned against you, and I need healing. Healing in my spirit, healing in my mind, healing in my soul. It doesn't matter if we are a part of this church. God wants us to repent, turn from our wicked ways, and come to him. And when we do this, he will pour his love on us, reveal the hidden manna, and lay down the white stone, make it impossible for us to spend eternity with him. Thank you. I love you for watching.